sometimes we take for granted our personal experience with God and we think it's just a progression that we start, we get saved and, and as we uh, learn new things we'll get better and better and we go from glory to glory. But it's not always like this. Certain times in our lives we hit like a stone wall. Like we, uh, we, we feel that some, sometimes that God is even far away from us. Uh, we, we think sometimes that, that God is so uh, distant that we cannot uh, truly uh, enjoy our Christian life. So the title of my message today is uh, Hit Your Personal Reset Button. Okay? Isn't that awesome that we have reset buttons? On cell phones we have reset buttons, we have reset buttons uh, practically in every gadget. But I want to tell you that we are ourselves, we also have a spiritual reset button. And today I'm going to uh, uh, try to explain you how to hit that button and how we can start all over again. And um, because sometimes we all mess up and, um, and we like uh, 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 sometimes to think that, uh, well, God will just forgive us and we'll continue. I need to tell you that many times it's not like this. We need to start all over again. So I'm going to, I have my invisible remote here and I'm going just to click it and uh, that, that thing is going to move on. All right. So uh, uh, what I want to talk today is fasting for a new beginning. Fasting for a new beginning. So understand that what God wants to do in our lives is to remove waste, remove, remove all those things that clutter our lives. And in the spirit, so, certain times because we listen to uh, the news, we listen to TV, we listen to people, we, we listen to so many things, we allow our spiritual life to be um, uh, filled with clutter, with things that really don't matter and that we accumulate through the years. It's like when we, when we come to church and we have a pastor and we learn the doctrine of that pastor and then we have another pastor and his doctrine is slightly different and we might be just close and say, well, I don't, I don't accept what this person is saying because I only accept what I've learned in the past. Now, uh, what we need to do many times is just to become like little children. That's what Jesus was teaching his disciples. He said, if you don't become like these little children, it's going to be very hard for you to enter the kingdom of heaven. So uh, to become like a little children, I need to unlearn some of the things that I've learned before. Hello, are you there? Okay. So when we need uh, to hit the spiritual reset button in our life, uh, one of the things we can do is fasting. And the thing that I want to tell you now is that we need to forget the past. I'm mean, hitting the remote. And Isaiah 43 verse 18, I'm going to read from God's Word translation. It says, forget what happened in the past and do not dwell on the events from long ago. So first thing we see here is, number one, forget the past. Forget the past. So how can I forget the past if I have such a good memory? Well, we need to train ourselves in order to do so. You know, they say that women have better memory than men in, in certain ways. It, it, it's truth. My, my wife certain times uh, asks me, uh, do you remember 25 years ago, you know, what happened after uh, we got married and uh, we took, a, uh, we took a, this, this train and you remember before we took the airplane where we, uh, we went and I, I completely forgot. <laughs> and she, she was telling me, we went by the seashore and we, we went there to this place and I said, uh-huh, uh-huh, you know, I completely for, forgot, you know, it's, it's sometimes like this and we have selective memory. So we, we men have memory for other things. So we will memorize uh, phone numbers and streets and how to get there and how to move there. And we know all sorts of things. So all of us are different. We all have different levels of memory. But what the Lord is trying to tell us here is that if you want really to enjoy the new things that God has for you, you need to go through a reset system. And the number one thing is forget the past. Forget the past. And then number uh, two, do not dwell on the events from long ago. So do not dwell on stuff that happened long time ago. Certain people have a trouble in, in having a progression in their spiritual life because they're always thinking about the past. 
and, and certain people have dif difficulties in forgiving others because they're always dwelling in the past. You did this and you did that and you said that and you know what happened. And so in order to hit the reset button, you need to, to understand uh, Isaiah uh, 43, 18. And finally, you need to find, number three, what God wants from you now. Now it's very important. You know, Jesus Christ said that we should think about the day of today. And, and it's not that we don't care about tomorrow, that we don't plan about tomorrow, but spiritually, today is very important. What does God want from you today? What is the place where you should be? Where are the things that you should be doing? Because if you just dwell in the past, you'll keep doing all the things that you did in your, in your past life. Now, let me progress to my third point, to be transformed by God's glory. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, Paul said, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we, who will unveil, with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His likeness, with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So you see here that there is a progression about being transformed by God. God wants to transform you from step to step, from glory to glory. You cannot dwell in the glory of the past if you're going to receive the glory that God has prepared for you in the future. It's like what he was telling, you know, those Pharisees and religious people. He was telling them, this, is, this stuff is like wine. Do you understand wine? It seems to me that you don't understand spirit. So let me talk about wine. There's the old wine and there's the new wine. And nobody that drank the old wine wants to drink the new wine because they will say that the old wine is better. But I want to tell you that indeed, if you want to experiment what the Spirit has for you, you cannot dwell on the old wine, you need to receive the new wine. Amen. You see, our spiritual life is amazing because it's never boring. If you're bored at church, something needs to reset. It's like that, you know, you need to hit that button that says reset and you need to start all over again. You know, if you come to church and church is just, you know, how long is it going to last? Is it done yet? Is it over? When can we go home? I need to eat. I want to watch the game. I want to do this. If your life is like this, you need to hit that spiritual reset button. And the Lord is saying here that the Lord, where the Lord is, there is freedom. You have freedom in God. And you will be transformed from glory to God, to, to glory. And as you have better communication with, with God, you'll have ever increasing glory. Let's read the next verse in 2 Corinthians 3.13. Paul continues in the same chapter, uh, giving this teaching, and he said, We are not like Moses. He kept covering his face with a veil. He didn't want the people of Israel to see the glory fading away. So here's Paul saying, We're not like Moses. Wow, this seems to be a very shocking thing to say. When you have a bunch of people that are listening to you, and they all want to be like Moses. <laughs> You see, he's just shocking them. They're just getting upset. They're saying, what is he preaching about? We're not like Moses. I mean, Moses was this hero. He fasted for two seasons of 40 days. And because he fasted for 40 days, you see, when you fast, you hit the reset button. Now the glory of the Lord is shining in his face. And people are looking into his face. But as he looks himself in the mirror, he gets to the conclusion that the glory is fading away as he starts to eat, you know, those nice uh, Israeli foods, that, you know, the lamb and the lamb chops and all those, those uh, delicacies and the manna and all those things. The things that he was eating, uh, I think he didn't eat uh, many lamb chops, it was more manna. I'm sorry for the, the mistake on the, on the menu. <laughs> but he was eating and the glory was fading away. Why? Why was the glory fading away? Because he was not in that connection with the Lord where he spent 40 days and 40 nights receiving the Ten Commandments. But because he didn't want the people to see the glory fading away, he put a, put a veil and he looked like, you know, those uh, women that have the hijab. So he was covering his face with a, with a veil. And Paul was telling the church and, and he was telling, listen, we are not like Moses. Because His glory was fading away, but our glory is not supposed to fade away. We are supposed to live with ever incre increasing glory. And I'm telling you the secret. The secret is to, to find the freedom that we have in Christ. To be transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. And when you allow the Lord to transform your life, you can go from glory to glory. Amen? Give that applause to the Lord. 
Now, let's, let's go to uh, my last scripture here, which is in 2 Corinthians 3.18. So, here's the same, same passage, same scripture, and uh, uh, Paul is talking about the glory of the Lord, and he's talking about being transformed. And again, listen, listen to this. Moses reflected the glory of the Lord because he spent time fasting. He spent time with the Lord. He spent a special time of reset in his own spiritual life. And he came down with the, with the commandments and he saw that the people were doing wrong things. So he went back again to the Lord. So he didn't give up. He went from glory to glory. Now in 2 Corinthians 3.18 it says, But we all, it seems like a, 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 an American thing, y'all. <laughs> but we all, with open face, Beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So it is the Spirit of the Lord that can transform your life from glory to glory, from step to step. And when you hit a step and you think you cannot go further, let me tell you, the way to go further is to hit a reset button in your spiritual life. This is why we're encouraging people to spend some time uh, fasting. And this requ requires an open face. Notice that Paul says, all of us with an open face. What does it mean, an open face? It means that we have nothing to hide. You see, some Christians, they have so many things to hide, they don't even talk with one another. You know, I, I've had people, even in our church, Christians, that say, I don't want to talk to you, and I'm a pastor. You know what this means? It means you need to hit the reset button. Because when you get to a point in which you don't want to talk about your fellow Christian, something is dead wrong with your life. And I'm here to tell you that God is merciful. He's waiting for you to hit that reset button, to become like a little child, and to receive what the Lord is saying here. All of us can be transformed, but requires an open face. Open face. You see, when I talk to people, you know, I look them in the eye. I have nothing to hide. I don't like to, uh, you know, to talk to someone and I'm looking down and, you know, some people are like this, they have something to hide. Do you have anything to hide? You know, the open face, it's not to the Lord, it's to one another. Because you cannot be transformed in your spiritual life if you don't allow the Lord to use your brothers and sisters in that process of transformation. That's why we have church. Now, let me finish by telling you that some people are so dirty, they, they, spiritually, that they even refuse to talk to God and they refuse to pray. So their spiritual life is in a mess. They say they're Christian, but they don't pray. They do those prayers just, thank you God for this food, amen. You know, and they have those uh, prayers they memorize from, grand, from their grandparents or from their mom. And they do that re repetitive prayer, but their spiritual life is null. It's nothing. And then they will criticize even the ones that pray. And they say, all oh, those people that spend all that time praying, they're fanatics, they're this, they're that. Listen to me. If you want to be transformed from glory to glory, you need to talk to the Lord. You need to hit that reset button. And now I'm concluding. And let me tell you uh, what relabel means. The, the relabel is when you have a thought or you receive a message and you label that message. See, it's like a person that was born a racist. And because of the environment, uh, their parents, they told me, you know, all, they told him only our race is good, all the other races are bad. And this can happen with white, black, Chinese, it doesn't matter. Uh, some people are racist, they, it doesn't matter, they, it's just, uh, they, they just learn to be racist. Now they come to the Lord, but they're still racist. They know it's wrong, but whenever they see a person from another race, there's a label. Bang! That's a different person. I'm giving you just as a, this as an example, because this happens in every area of life. Other people, it's because if, if you don't wear the right clothes, you're labeled. You're labeled. There's a label. And people put labels in everything. See, uh, most of the, the shows that people like to watch on TV, they have judges. Like America Got Talent and all, all those things. And the judges and people vote and you do, did well, you did wrong. And people put labels. It's a label. And when you have the, all these labels, you say, oh, that person, he's a stupid. That one, it's a... And, and, and some, certain times it's even swear words in, in the mind of Christians. I've talked to Christians that labeled everybody. 
And when you label people, you have a prejudice. You have a prejudice because you're not able to receive anything from that person. Now this is so silent. I know you take, you're paying attention. Now, when you relabel, you need to identify what's a glitch. And, and the glitch is when you label wrongly. You label someone, you label the situation, but it's wrong. It's wrong. And how do you know it's wrong? Let's go to the next one. Reattribute. Reattribute is a process in your brain. And, uh, and when you have this process going on, you ask yourself, where did this come from? You know, these thoughts. What is the origin of, the, of this thought? So when you label a person and say this person is stupid or this person is no good because it's not of my race or this person I don't like them because they're conservative this one I don't like them because they're Bloc Québécois this one I don't like this person because this person is this oh I don't like this one because he's a Roman Catholic priest I don't like that person because it reminds me of my, my grandfather that used to hit me with a belt and people have all these labeling things that's the truth so you need to relabel and, and identify people as human beings, number one. And then when you start to reattribute, you do the question, why, this, why are these thoughts coming back? Why do I have these repetitive thoughts? What is the origin of these thoughts? Is this from God? Is this from the devil? Is this from myself? Is this from my past? Is this making sense to you? So you identify, because sometimes as a Christian, you say, I don't like that person. And then if you apply this method, you say, where is this thought coming from? Is this coming from the Lord? Now let's hit number three, refocus. This is the, th the toughest step. Remember, first you relabel. You start putting labels. And you know how, how you should put labels if you want to go from glory to glory? You label everyone as a child of God. I mean in the church. You label everyone. And they do stuff you don't like, but you still label them. He's my brother. She's my sister. You label them. And then you start to reevaluate things. And if you have a bad thought about a person, you need to ask yourself, where is this coming from? And I'm telling you, I've listened to Christians talking in a way that I know those, those words and those labels that are, they're putting into people, they're coming straight from hell. They're not coming from the Lord. They're not coming from God. You see, God loves you. Jesus loves you. And when Jesus allows you to see through His eyes, you start to reevaluate things and then you refocus. When you refocus, this is uh, uh, actually hard to do, it's when you decide to put your old behavior to the side and you decide to see things in a different way. You see, you cannot be transformed from glory to glory if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to, uh, you know, to put some lenses in your eyes that will allow you to see the world through God's glasses. And now when you see the world, you're not just seeing the world that you label, but you're seeing the world as Jesus sees the world. And I'm telling you, God sees the best in you. God sees the best in people. And when you look to someone and you're transformed by glory, they can do something really mean and evil. But you're still able to look at that person. And the, in, instead of fighting, criticizing, labeling that person, you can just pray for that person. You can just, just worship the Lord. You can allow the Lord to reshape the way you, you see things. And finally, fourth step, you reevaluate. Do you want to go from glory to glory? Do you want to hit the reset button? You need to do something about your thoughts. You cannot, you, you know, you cannot progress to the next step without becoming like a child. So when you reevaluate, everything comes all together. And when you, with consistency, you, you do the, the previous steps, we, you're consistent, uh, consistent in doing it, then it all becomes easy. Your life is not a burden. Your spiritual life is easy. Then you start to see things through different eyes. You're not just, you know, carrying burdens and being, being unhappy. Now you're happy because God is with you. 
Now you're relabeling people in the way they should be relabeled. Now you're relabeling situations in the way they should be relabeled. When something bad happens, instead of just complaining, now you relabel and you say all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord, that were called by His degree. Now you know when something bad happens, maybe it's not the devil, maybe it's the Lord allowing certain things to happen in your life to allow you to go from glory to glory. So hit the reset button. And if you don't know how to do it, spend some time fasting. And I'm going to uh, continue to teach about uh, fasting and prayer. Let us all stand. And uh, the service is not over. But I'd like to pray for all of us. And what this means is we, we can improve our ability to defeat the, 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 the way of thinking of the past. And, you know, uh, let's put the last slide. There's a, a slogan that I really like in business. It's the slogan, Think Different. And uh, this slogan was introduced by a company that everybody mocked. Well, I have news for you. Nobody mocks that company anymore. Nobody mocks that company anymore. In fact, they rule the world of business today. Why? Because they decided to think different. When everybody said, no, there's only one way of doing things. There's only one way of selling these products. There's only way of, of doing what, what everybody does. And this is the traditional way. And I'm not here to do publicity to a company, so I'm not going even to say the name. But if you look at the logo, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> but that company, when everybody mocked and teased, and everybody was against them, they said, we can do things differently. And they've succeeded because they do it with excellence. Let me tell you as Christians, it's time for us to think different. Not a different gospel, but a different approach to the same gospel. And we need to do it regularly in our lives. Because when we hit the block, it's time to say, Lord, here I am again. Forgive me. Change me. And hit the reset button.